हरि ओम ओम सहना सहनो भुन सह वीर तरवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमा विदिषा वह ओं शाते शाते ओम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराणा आल कल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यत वंदे भगवत पुनः समस्त जन कल्याण निरत करुणाय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर हरिओं सलूटेशन टू ऑल सो वी हैड सीन द इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द उपनिषद वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द उपनिषद वर्ड उपनिषद एंड we also came up to the point where the shanti mantra each upanishad has a shanti mantra the teacher and the student come together and they both chant the mantra before the upanishad uh, begins the idea here is why should both of them chant because the tuning between the teacher and the student has to happen the mind has to get tuned whose mind has to get tuned to whom swami ji teachers mind has to get tuned to students mind actually both because the teacher needs to tune up to the students mind to understand what is the level at which the student is and then from there the knowledge has to be imparted and the student is uplifted student has to tune up to the teacher's mind also to be able to understand what the teacher is saying but both of them have to tune up to bhagwan the common altar of surrender is the lord and when both tune up to the lord then the tuning between both also happens so shanti mantra is meant for both and teacher and the student both come together and chant first to quieten their minds then to quieten the mind in such a how to quieten their minds so remember the divine invoke the supreme lord and through that they both tune up to each other also student becomes see student also uh, cultivate certain qualities which are there uh, mentioned in the shanti mantra as we chant the shanti mantra we invoke those qualities in us if the teacher is a realized master the teacher does not need that shanti mantra that way to invoke the qualities but yet the teacher will chant why so that the mind is empty one thing for the teacher then it is remembrance of one's own self he is not invoking some qualities and thinking of the divine that way then the two teacher is invoking the supreme and the knowledge actually the guru is the lord alone so whether a teacher is realized or not realized the teacher thinks about the lord because bhagwan is the real guru and the knowledge flows from the guru only who is the lord 
one only becomes an empty channel let it flow so shanti mantra is very important and it is also called shanti mantra because the mind which is not quiet cannot achieve anything actually and here we are speaking about the highest knowledge the supreme knowledge of brahman the mind has to be quiet only in a quiet mind there is a capability to absorb reflect on what one has absorbed assimilate it apply it in one's life <clears throat> so all this you know absorbing assimilation application cannot happen unless the mind has become quiet if the mind is disturbed thinking of something or the other it is not in the present moment that mind does not grasp properly it doesn't listen with full attentiveness so that mind is a mind which is in fact it may be dangerous also because in vedant if we listen to something our mind has wandered somewhere else again we bring it back in between we have lost the link then the knowledge is gone incomplete it is not proper logical sequential thought process and there are chances of misunderstanding so it's very important to quieten the mind and focus when when one is listening to vedant what should be one's bhav nothing else matters everything else is a preparation for listening in vedant it is said shravanam matrena gnanam bhavati by just listening with a pure and a single pointed mind realization will happen instantly then and there there is no need for reflection and contemplation if the mind is ready we saw that in the adhikari different levels of adhikari so are there so the uttam adhikari it will happen immediately instant then and there so one listens to vedant with that attitude that nothing else matters for this one hour one hour 15 minutes whatever time we have allotted for it especially because when we are doing this online there's always a temptation of putting on the talk cooking something talking to somebody doing the morning uh, you know chores vedant one has to listen with full attentiveness not moving about maximum and write some notes if one wants to just for one's reflection but otherwise with full alertness attentiveness one listens to vedant then it will go in transform what are we seeking to transform our jeeva bhav we are seeking to transform that drop our false identifications come to realize the truth which is our own true nature just the ignorance of it is causing so much challenge to us that ignorance can go only by knowledge knowledge comes through listening so all my work my duties everything that i do is preparation for this and hence when one has finished the preparation and when one is uh, sitting for this listening one is not thinking about the preparation and anything else one is just focused now on listening fully so shanti mantra is to focus now this shanti mantra like we said earlier that every veda has different upanishads and uh, the shanti mantra in many of them of that particular veda will be the same there are other shanti mantras also in that veda which may be utilized in different contexts and in some places for different uh, upanishads also but generally we see a certain shanti mantra of a particular veda will be there common for that open the upanishads of that particular veda so here we have kaivalya upanishad from the um, <clears throat> atharva veda so the upanishads of atharva veda mundaka upanishad mandukya upanishad kaivalya upanishad amrit bindu upanishad they all will have same shanti mantra 
So let us chant that Shanti Mantra. Om Bhadram Karne Bhishrunu Yama Devaha Bhadram Prashe Maksha Bhirya Jatraha Stirai Rangai Is Tushtu Vagm Sastanu Bhihi Yashe Ma Deva Hitanyadayuhu Swastina Indro Vridha Shravaha Swastina Usha Vishwavedaha Swasti Nastakshyo Arishta Nemihi Swasti No Brahaspatir Dadhatu Om Shanti Shanti So this very famous Shanti Mantra, especially the second half, many of the people will be knowing because whether somebody knows any mantra or not, what is the occasion? What we want to do? One bothers none, one doesn't bother about any of that. So many times one just starts Swastina Indra Vridhasha Vaha. So many occasions and so many movies and serials and all that. They will just start singing this. So what is this mantra saying? So the literal meaning first we will see the basic meaning. Om Bhadram Karne Bihi Chunayama Devaha. Om is the shortest indicator of the truth. Ekaksharam Brahma. Om Iti Ekaksharam Brahma. Om is one single syllable that indicates the imperishable truth. Om. Bhadram Karne Bihi Chunayama. With our ears, may we listen to what is auspicious. This is being addressed to whom? Devaha. O Devatas. We will see who are Devatas. Om Bhadram Karne Bhi Shunayama Devaha. O Devas, may we listen to what is auspicious. Bhadram Pashye Maksha Bhir Yajatraha. May we see what is auspicious. O Worshipful Ones. Yajatraha means Worshipful Ones. O Devatas. O worshipful ones, may we hear what is auspicious, may we see what is auspicious. Sthirai rangai tushtuvagum sastanu bhi. With hale and hearty limbs, may I have a healthy body. <clears throat> Vyashema deva hitam yadayuhu. May we spend our allotted lifespan in this way. With good health, seeing auspicious, hearing auspicious. <clears throat> then, uh, Swastina Indra Vridha Shravaha. May Indra, who is the most ancient, very wise, may he be auspicious to me. Swastina Pusha Vishwavedaha. May Pusha, the sun, the all nourisher be auspicious to me. Swastina Tarksho Arishta Nemihi. May Tarksha, the Lord of the Wind, be auspicious to me. Then Swastina Brahaspati Dadhatu. May Brahaspati be auspicious to me. The, the Guru of the Devatas. May he be auspicious to me. Oh, um, shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May there be peace, peace, peace. Now this is the basic Shanti Mantra. So what does this Shanti Mantra do? So this Shanti Mantra, there are many things that this will do, but basic five things, first of all. <clears throat> so first of all, this Shanti Mantra speaks about Arogya. It speaks about Mangala Anubhuti. Bhadram Karnebhi is auspicious and auspicious in Mangal. So, if we go in the sequence, let us see, we, let us go in the sequence, so it is easy to remember. So, first is Mangal Anubhuti, invoking auspiciousness. Second is uh, seeking good health. Third is invoking the grace of the phenomenal forces being in tune with nature. Fourth, the 
grace of the supreme lord we invoke and our effort also we have to put so it is indicating both self effort and invoking grace of bhagwan because we want to realize the truth the brahma vidya is what we seek and uh, fifth is invoking peace may there be peace from phenomenal forces from the beings around and from subjective disturbances so five things the shanti mantra will do now let us see each of these now that uh, first one bhadram karne bhi shunayam devaha may we listen to what is auspicious so and may we see what is auspicious so listening and seeing these two are symbolic of all the other sense faculties so seeing hearing then tasting smelling touching all may there be only auspiciousness when we interact with all why see up amongst all the senses also mainly these two seeing and hearing are responsible for our thought processes others are involved no doubt but mainly these two because our thoughts are nothing but sound and form nama and rupa so if i say apple now the sound of apple is producing the form of apple in the mind so there is an image that comes and i recognize oh this is the apple so i know what is an apple then the image of apple comes about that's how i become aware of the the sound has created a form suppose we say love then somebody whom i love or a heart or any such thing associated with love that will come up in the mind so thoughts are names and forms illumined by awareness and these names and forms we get we get mainly from the eyes and the ears and so if we see what is auspicious if we hear what is auspicious then what happens our thoughts become auspicious if i see anything talk anything listen to anything then it is not going to create auspiciousness and hence very consciously one invokes auspiciousness around us there can be anything there can be beautiful things there can be auspicious things there can be inauspicious things now what is auspicious and what is inauspicious there are different ways to understand that what helps us to evolve to live higher values of life to live with more harmony to live in peace love compassion kindness that is auspicious where it creates divisions where it hurts others where it is making us compromise where we don't live the higher values of life those things are inauspicious so any beautiful sight in the nature when we see auspicious some nice sounds we hear auspicious name of bhagwan we hear auspicious our conversations are about inspiring ideas ideals you know positive uh, let us say projects something which will lead to more growth development externally or even internally all that is auspicious so what i see what i hear bhadram karne vi chunayam devaha so one meaning of auspicious is that that whatever helps me to evolve higher from who i am today like what people say no that may i become the best version of myself so whatever helps me to evolve is auspicious and what is the meaning of evolution then where i gain a certain mastery of the body mind intellect where there is a certain alignment of this body mind intellect where my attachments have dropped where i learn to become more equanimous where i gain more clarity of knowledge 
where I expand to serve. All that is evolution. Don't say, Swamiji, I evolve by eating chocolate and drinking coffee. I mean, you can eat chocolate, drink coffee, not a problem. But if there is an attachment to it, then that is not evolution. In fact, that is devolution then for the person. It is not auspicious for that person anymore. Though by itself, coffee and chocolate, there is nothing wrong in it. But our attachment makes it inauspicious for us then. So may I see what is auspicious? May I hear what is auspicious? Also means that may I interact with detachment because then the world becomes an auspicious place, life becomes auspicious, our efforts are a sadhana to evolve. Otherwise, the same thing becomes inauspicious for me. It may be the most health, conducive, healthy thing also. Suppose I overeat. Even like how Bhagavan says in the Gita that uh, anything in extreme, one should avoid. If one goes on eating, that is not auspicious. And if one goes on fasting, that is also not auspicious. Natyashnatastu yogosti nachai kantam anashnataha. If one goes on eating so much food, because one says, I am a foodie, I love food, and I go on eating food. There is nothing wrong in eating food. It is not immoral, it is not illegal. But it is inauspicious for that person. Now we should know this. Anything which is not immoral and illegal does not mean it is auspicious. If it is not helping me to develop, evolve higher, it is not auspicious. So fasting even goes on fasting and doesn't eat properly, then na kanta manashnata. If one does not eat, then that is not auspicious. If one goes on eating, that is not auspicious. Same way, sleep, exercise, even spiritual practice, Bhagavan says, yukta svapna avabodhasya. Even avabodha means spiritual practice. That also one should not do in extremes. Moderation and then slowly increase the intensity and if one has become the Duttamadhikari, then one lives through that type of uh, full-time seeker, then one is dedicated for only that purpose. Then that's a different thing. That is not called extreme. There one has chosen to do that exclusively. So, what we have to know? Bhadram means that which helps me to evolve higher. Bhadram means that which brings harmony in the mind, body, uh, as we said, alignment. When we don't, and how that will bring alignment? When it is focused on some higher values of life, then only it will bring alignment. I know what is right, but I do something opposite. I know what is truth, but I speak something opposite. That is not Bhadram. That will bring disharmony. When I speak, when I think what is truth, speak what is truth, behave at the level of action, sad vichar, sad vyani, sad vyavahar, that is Bhadram. If asat comes in any of these places, I think the truth but I speak untruth or I think the truth, speak the truth but I act in an untruthful way, abhadram. So it's not merely form what we see but everything that we are doing, is it helping me to evolve, helping me to align, helping me to drop my attachment to the body? If I think Anything that takes me closer to the realization of the self is bhadram. This one can apply. Now, any goal one has, suppose I want to reduce weight is my goal. Then, if I go on putting on eating more calories, it is abhadram. If my goal is to, uh, let us say, um, attain a particular, uh, clear a particular exam or work hard and uh, you know finish a particular project by a particular timeline then whatever helps me to focus on that and achieve that is bhadram anything that distracts me deviates me makes me uh, lose the intensity uh, post procrastination all that is abhadram 
सो दिस फर्स्ट लाइन इट सेल्फ इज वेरी पावरफुल भद्रम करने भी शुणुयाम देवा फॉर अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ रियलाइजेशन वॉट वन हियर्स वॉट वन सीज इज वेरी वेरी क्रुशियल बिकॉज वॉट वन इज ट्राइंग टू रियलाइज इज द नेचर ऑफ द सेल्फ हु आई एम इन माई ट्रू नेचर and what we see what we hear the mind goes on feeding that brooding on that so it can make the person distracted deviated and develop many uh, attachments pleasure seeking can happen through that and the mind goes out through that what we see na in the gita the ladder of fall dhyayato vishayan pumsah when one broods on the sense objects then one gets attached suppose i see a very beautiful let us say some sari one has seen or some car one has seen or a phone one advertisement of a phone anything what one sees now one starts brooding oh if i have this phone if i have this sari if i have this car so nice it will be and you know what people will think about me and i will enjoy in this way and this brooding is happening now as one does this fanciful imagination one gets attached to that sangasteshu upajayate then sangar sanjayate kama now i want that particular thing desire as reason if the desire is fulfilled it may give rise to greed insecurity fear why because of fear of losing it greed i want more of it you know insecurity that uh, somebody should not take it away from me i will become lesser if somebody takes it away all that so if it is fulfilled this will happen if it is not fulfilled anger kama turodho bhi jayate frustration anger stress all that then krodha bhavati sammoha one gets deluded one doesn't know what is right what is wrong in fact one thinks of the right as wrong one justifies the anger rodhat bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vibhrama then one doesn't even remember who is in front of me what should be my conduct anything one speaks any how one behaves one can become violent angry frustrated you know pushed to the desperation because that desire makes that person like that so much attachment to that desire because one has done fanciful brooding then smriti bhramshat buddhi nasha when buddhi nasha happens because i don't know who is in front of me i don't uh, have the right memory the uh, proper data is not there it is eclipsed it's there but it is eclipsed so i behave so badly that relationship gets strained one doesn't uh, live up to the dignity of a human being buddhi nasha pranashyati one falls now all this happened why swami ji because of brooding it happened ha why did we brood because some sense input has gone in no either i saw through my eyes or somebody told me ah oh, do you have you heard about this have you seen this did you visit this place did you eat that food now one has started brooding then the ladder of fall starts so though there are eight steps in that one step which is the cause of all these is not yet added there it means it's implied there because in that thought process in the gita bhagwan has already spoken about sense control giving the example of thought toys and then he speaks about this so there it is implied because of the context here we have to understand that that bhadram karne bhi shunyam bhadram pashye maksha bhi rajatra is the first step in sadhana if you see the gita chariot na the horses four horses representing five senses they are white in color tata shvete hayai yukte mahati syandane sthitau in the gita bhagwan the chariot of arjuna and bhagwan is described that way shveta haya white horses why there are white horses because they represent purity of the senses if we don't have control over what i see and here impossibilities to have harmony of the mind so may i see auspicious may i hear auspicious 
Swami, all around us, there are so many things which are not auspicious. Then we have to learn to withdraw our attention from that. Sometimes our mind only craves for it. And we justify it also. There is a dark side to everybody. And you know, there are enough movies and serials and series of web series and all that which will say, explore your dark side. It's natural. It is human. Array, we don't need all that. Without exploring that, anyway, it is expressing. Why do we want to explore? <laughs> everybody has a dark side. It is expressing. Now, why do you want to explore the dark side? For what joy? It will only bring destruction ultimately. So vulgar things, violent things, when I am seeing, I am talking my language, I don't use appropriate language, use some slang, use some abusive words. How is it possible that uh, mind will be peaceful? The one who wants to see auspicious also has to create auspiciousness. No, it can't be that people will create auspiciousness and I will then see. Because what I am doing also has to be auspicious because I am the seer, the first I only see what I do. And second, I am also then creating auspiciousness for others. So how I look, how I behave, how I, you know, converse, what are the things I keep around me, in my room, in my house, all that is a reminder that I should do auspicious first. Not that Swamiji world has to become auspicious, then only I can see auspicious. No, I am a part of that world. I have to create that for myself and for others. Same way, if I have to listen to what is auspicious, I have to speak auspicious. I am my voice. I am the first listener before anybody else listens. So may I speak auspicious? May I hear auspicious? May I see auspicious? So, Bhadram Karne Bhi, Shunayam Devaha means I should speak auspicious also. Not that Swamiji, that person is not speaking. This drama, this is not an auspicious language. That neighbor, this boss. No, no. This is about us. May I see what is auspicious? May I hear what is auspicious? Which is for both, in, inside and outside. So, I should create auspiciousness around me. Bhadram karne bhi shunayama deva. Bhadram pashye maksha bhirya jatraha. And by implication, all the other senses. So this is one topic in itself, how to manage our senses. What to eat, what to speak. If anybody manages their tongue, masters the tongue, one has mastered the mind also. Because so many things happen when the mastery of the tongue is not there. So, mastering the senses, seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching, all very, very important. Bhadram karne bhi shunayama devaha, bhadram pashye maksha bhirya jatraha is to invoke auspiciousness in all my sense interactions. Nothing wrong in enjoying with the senses, but as our culture says, eat the food, let not the food eat you. Meaning, I should enjoy as a master, not as a victim. Not out of desperation, not out of this attitude that, what they call nowadays, FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh, if I don't eat this, I missed out something. Oh, if I don't go there, I missed out something. Nothing. If you go, uh, if you are able to go, great. If you are able to eat, wonderful. If not, doesn't matter. Real Bhadram is here, not out there. So if we understand that what is truly auspicious is the Supreme Consciousness. Shiva is auspicious. Now when we say Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram, I don't mean Shiva only as a form. That Shiva as a form, of course. But Shiva as a state of consciousness is the truth, is auspicious, is beauty. So to have the darshan of that the bhavana that all this is divine and to interact with that attitude with everything around, that is Bhadram. Because Bhadram word also means self, Atma, auspicious. What is the most auspicious is the Atma, which lends existence to everything, which makes everything alive, which is of the nature of absolute bliss. That is the most auspicious. 
so through our senses whatever i am seeing may i have the attitude that all this is divine only then i can do anything all this is divine only that bhav of all this is divine will not stay in the mind the moment we interact with something where our mind falls to some lower values so there is auspicious and inauspicious at one level something which will create positivity in the mind suppose we say a beautiful flower the flower as you know is blooming nicely now that will bring auspicious thoughts in the mind it is nature it is beauty it is wonderful now same thing after it has completely withered away it starts decaying it starts smelling then there is inauspicious so at a certain level there is auspicious in inauspicious if i use abusive words it is inauspicious as one does this discrimination of auspicious and inauspicious and starts focusing more on the auspicious and lets go of the inauspicious the mind will come into higher and higher states becomes quiet pure refined has the ability to turn within only such a mind can realize that there is a self here the atma is my nature and that atma alone is everywhere so the upanishads when they are saying this that brahman alone is atman alone is all this is appearance of that one truth one can't grasp that knowledge if one has not done basic discrimination of bhadram and abhadram and then chosen to be with the bhadram so the prayer is may i see auspicious may i hear auspicious because if i continue to engage in that i will have the bhav that everything is auspicious at the same time one will also know what is not uh, appropriate one will not engage in that सो भद्रम करने भी शुणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्य माक्ष वाई आर वी वर्शिपिंग देवता वाई आर वी सेंग टू देवता अबाउट दिस ओ देवा ओ वर्शिपुल वंस मे आई सी ऑस्पेशियस मे आई हियर ऑस्पेशियस सो हु आर दीज देवता सो वॉट वी हैव इन अवर सनातन धर्म दिस एंटायर बॉडी इज ओनली अ ग्रॉस बॉडी इट इज थूल शरीर बाई इट सेल्फ इट इज मेड अप ऑफ फाइव एलिमेंट्स इट इज इन नॉट it is not sentient by itself it has different capabilities only when there is life which is present in this if life is not there in this if consciousness does not illumine this if the subtle body the mind is not there in this the body cannot function by itself that's why dead body is where the subtle body is ejected out of it gone out and so one has to understand that this body is not functioning by itself this is only a tool like a car can't run by itself it is only a vehicle there is a user of that same way i the individuality mr so and so is operating through this body right now and this body is a part of this entire srishti nature it is not something different from it no so nature is governed by phenomenal forces they are the devatas this body is a product of panchamabhuta space air fire water earth these five forces they they are presiding deities who govern these five forces so we say vayu devta is there agni devta is there varuna devta is there you know same way so space big devata sa there <clears throat> space air vayu devata then fire surya agni all of them then water varuna earth prithvi mata we say so the idea here is the body is made up of five elements these five elements have fit are uh, having residing deities who are the forces which govern the functioning of this it is not randomly happening anything is not randomly happening here we may see only the physicality of it or we see sun we see fire we see earth we see the you know we feel the air we think it is inert nature in, in nature is not inert nature is enlivened by 
consciousness. That's why we say Purusha and Prakriti come together for the Srishti to happen. So the Purusha, infinite consciousness manifesting through all these. And there is a, you know, there is a harmony in these phenomenal forces. When these forces come together, a certain creation happens and a certain uh, sophistication of the equipment also is there of this human body and so many other creatures. Every single creature, if you think about it, has such sophisticated systems. Their habitats are different, they, the food for them is different, the way they respond is different, the number of senses they have is different. It is mind-boggling that how so much of sophistication in each single creature will be there. Just look at our body, our eyes. Even the best cameras of today can't manage to do what exactly our eyes will do. They can replicate in some way certain things, but our eye is, we take it for granted, but it's such a sophisticated web, uh, equipment. How does that function? Swami randomly chal raha No, no. When say Chakshusha Surya, Surya, in the medium of light, we are able to see. That is one aspect. But the second aspect is that there is a phenomenal force, a presiding deity who governs this capability of seeing. How we use that, that is our freedom. Like see, Gurudev used to give this beautiful example. He would say that uh, there are various heads of the departments. Suppose you go to a municipality, there is a water department, there is a fire department, you know, different departments are there. There are heads of those departments. Now you are living in your house, you need water connection, you have to go to them, apply. You need fire connection, go to them, apply. And once you do, they will give you the water line, gas line, all that will come to you. Then how you use that is your freedom. Same way, capabilities are there, presiding deities are there, the body is able to function because it's a part of nature, nature has phenomenal forces. So the forces of the nature, they are governing this also because this is also part of nature. What we have done is we have excluded ourselves from that. So we think nature is outside us. And we are to use nature. Nature is for us to enjoy. Are, this is also part of nature only. I am something else. I am the Atma, which is enlivening all this. This is what one wants to realize. So when we say that Devas, oh Devas, may I see auspicious, may I hear auspicious. On one hand, it is an auto-suggestion to ourselves that may we live that way, may our senses engage with what is auspicious. On the other hand, we are also invoking the grace of the devatas because they are presiding over these phenomenal forces. And so may their grace be available always. Sun should be there no? for us, for the light to be there, for us to see properly. And the uh, Today we know so much about the sun and the vitamin D and the, you know vitamin A, the eyesight and scientifically we may have understood a few things but exposure to sunlight is important. People go into depression when they are not exposed to sunlight for so many days when it is gloomy and rainy and you know the sun doesn't come out. We are lucky in a tropical area we are staying. There are people where sun doesn't come out for days together, living in the other regions, you know, closer to the poles and all that. So, I'm just giving one example of sun. Same way, fire, water, air, earth, so many things around us. All these, when we say there are 33 crore devatas, there are 33 main categories of devatas and below them are the uh, from them are the, the total other 33 crores uh, manifesting. Eight Vasus, 12 Adityas, 11 Rudras, 2 Ashwini Kumars or Indra and Brahaspati. 33, cro 33 main categories. All the rest come from them. The entire creation, just think about it. One country to manage, how many people are required? Now the elections are coming. You just think once in five years, what a massive exercise it is to conduct the elections. The largest democracy on the earth. 
so many places so many officers are required bureaucracy is there government is there different heads are there chief ministers are there you look at the whole system if you see political system there is only one system so much to govern the country in one aspect so many different aspects are there in the whole creation of course there are these different forms i mean different devatas and phenomenal forces so we are seeking their grace so that they when they function well we are able to uh, experience things in this world properly through our senses and also that we are saying that may we see auspicious may we hear auspicious meaning may we not create something which is inauspicious and disharmonious in the world so human beings and devatas work together which is a vedic culture we lived in tune with nature we lived in tune with things around us so we understand the principles so when these phenomenal forces they are sentient powers when we invoke them we understand the nature also better then auspiciousness happens when we understand properly otherwise we will create disharmony suppose you have a pet now you have no understanding of the pet now it is a problem for you also and the pet also but if there is an understanding okay how, how the pet functions what should be given to it what should not be given to it what is the way in which the you know their body clock is different our body clock is different so if we understand properly then there is auspiciousness harmony bhadram otherwise is lot of challenge same way this whole creation so many subtle aspects are there in this srishti which will help us which will help others if we tune up with the divine forces we will understand and that's how our ancestors understood so many things in the nature and brought out such deep knowledge in any field art literature dance music food is fantastic how they have gone into the depth of it it's not just human beings um uh, independent uh, you know exploration and uh, buddhi and creativity and intelligence no doubt all that but there are cosmic forces which are way more powerful than human beings if one is able to quieten the mind invoke so if you see the veda in the karmakand etc all that is there where one propitiates the devatas through their blessings one gets power position wealth prosperity child fame glory all that comes here the student doesn't want all that because one wants to know the truth one has seen through all that we saw in the preparation but this is why one invokes the devatas and a student of the upanishads though one wants one wants to realize absolute oneness oneness cannot be realized if there is disharmony so in the srishti we may say that oh srishti is illusory then this body also is illusory no as a part of the srishti do i think that way if i think my body is real i must eat drink and enjoy and then srishti is illusory that will not work so even if vedant says srishti is illusory the shanti mantra is still invoking grace of the devatas the guru is still chanting the mantra why because at a relative plane as long as this body is there there are phenomenal forces there is a srishti so one has to live in harmony with those forces so for swastina indro vridha shrava sorry this devahan yajatraha so devatas and worshipful ones who are these devatas phenomenal forces they are jeevas actually but they have attained that position of devata by doing lot of punya karma they derive their power from bhagwan so indra is a position agni is a position vayu is a position these are positions and specific jeevas occupy those positions as per their karma their punya and they enjoy a certain power and uh, they are in charge of that part of the creation 
So with that power comes sometimes the you know stories etc. Where we see where there is some arrogance, there is some ego, then they fall. So human being learns from that also. That oh, even in a position of devta, one can fall. They are in general worshipful, no doubt. Yajatraha. And they have much, much more power than you and I can even imagine. <clears throat> but even with all that, it is not infinity, it is not realization of the truth. One is still feeling the jiva bhav, so there will be insecurity, fear, all that will happen. So through that, the human being understands that why, why should I even strive to know those things? I should realize the truth. But in general, when we say devatas are worshipful, because they are punyatmas, they have done a lot of good to come there to that position. Like just example, Indra. Indra is one who can take the position of Indra. Only somebody who has done 100 Ashwamedha Yagnyas can come to the position of Indra. One can't come otherwise. Now to do that 100 Ashwamedha Yagnyas, one has to live in tapasya, self-control and uh, many things have to happen. Lot of dana, punya, one should have done, helped out people, build that bank of punya to come to that level of Indra. Same way for all the devatas, there is the whole description may be given that if you do this much, this will happen, this will happen, all that the scriptures will say, then you become this. So the idea here is they are divine, they are phenomenal forces, they are having much more power than us. They derive their power from Bhagwan. It's not their independent power. And so when we worship them, when we are in tune with them, it is good for us. And also that we evolve. So, Bhadram Karne Bhi Shunayama Devaha Bhadram Pashe Maksha Bhi Yajatraha Sthirai Rangai Tushtu Vagam Sastanu Bhi with all the limbs, may all my limbs be hale and hearty and healthy and strong. May I have a good physique, good health. So, Arogya. Why do I need good health? Because I want to do sadhana. As a human being, this is the best equipment I have. In the human birth, there is this buddhi. And may I use the buddhi well. May I use my body to serve the people, not that I keep being sick and then people have to serve me. May I serve the people. Service is the best way to purify the mind. And if I can do service, I mean for me to do service, I should have a good physique, good health. So basic exercise, sattvic food, sleep, all this is very important. And the body is to be taken care of. So again, may I have, one is praying to devatas. That does not mean that I don't do anything for it. That's why I said this is a combination of self-effort and grace. Both. So may I have a healthy body so that I can do sadhana, I can meditate, I can serve, I can do upasana. All the three, karma yoga sadhana I can do. Upasana, remembering of Bhagavan I can do. Contemplation, listening to Vedant, contemplation I can do. All sadhanas I can do only when body is healthy. If the body is not healthy, none of this can happen. One may manage to do somehow if one has that intensity of, you know, the feeling to do seva or to do remembrance of Bhagwan. Any of that one will be able to do. But if the body is healthy, then one feels good about it. One goes about it in a very... Uh, positive way, enjoys it also. Otherwise, one has to struggle through it. One may manage to do. But more importantly, the idea here is a Vedantic student does not neglect the body or abuse the body. Both are very important. So when we say that may all the limbs of my body be healthy and may I have a good healthy life, what is the meaning of that? That I treat the body appropriately where I don't go on indulging and abusing it and drain all the energies of the body nor do I neglect it that I don't give it proper food, I don't give it proper rest 
eat less, sleep less, no exercise. Why? I am not the body. Why should I care for it? One has to take care of the body. Last stages where one has such deep levels of vairagya and the mind is so introverted, absorbed and for days and hours and months, sometimes one is in samadhi. Those are very different states. One can't come to that without doing proper sadhana and taking care of the body. And that we don't have to worry because that time then Bhagwan ensures that the body of the seeker is taken care of. And the seeker does not have to focus on that. Like Ramakrishna Paramahamsa used to go into Samadhi. Sometimes standing he will go into Samadhi. And for sometimes hours he will be standing like that. So there used to be this nephew of his called Hridai. Who will be with him sometimes? Then we know okay, okay, now he has gone into Samadhi. So he is there to protect. Otherwise the body will fall. Sometimes balance is not there or any other reason. The body will fall. But Hridai is there to save. Those are different states we are talking about. For us, it is important to do our basic things. I always give this F-E-S-T, food, exercise, sleep and training of the senses. We have to do all the four for the body. Training of senses already came on the top. Bhadram Karne Vishwanayam Deva. Eat Satvik food. Do proper exercise at least 20 minutes a day. Sleep at least 7 to 8 hours. If one has controlled the mind and one is doing some yogic techniques also and then one is doing seva, then we may not need long time of sleep, but at least five to six hours one will need. Then the body rejuvenates well. Mind becomes fresh. So, may I do all this to keep the body as a fit equipment, neither neglecting it nor you know, abusing it walking the path of moderation. So, Sirairangai Tushtuvagam Sastanubhi Swastina Indra Vridha Shravaha May Indra, who is most ancient, meaning most uh, wise also, king of the Devatas, may that Indra be auspicious to me. So now Indra has many meanings. So, one meaning of word Indra is, Indra is the presiding deity of the hands. Hastayoho Indra, it is said in Tattva Bodh. If you have not studied Tattva Bodh, please study. Because fundamentals, if they are not clear, deeper knowledge one cannot gain. And uh, right now classes are going on. Vedant Fundas, we started. So, Tattva Bol, one very has to, one has to learn. Now, what I was saying, the hands, like we said, Chakshusha, Suryaha, Rasanayaha, Varunaha, these are phenomenal forces governing our senses. The tongue is governed by Varun Devta, eyes are governed by Surya Devta, ears are governed by Dig Devta, you know. Like that. These are senses of knowledge. That senses of action, hands, symbolic of grasping, dropping, purushartha. So may that Indra be auspicious, meaning may my actions be auspicious and through that may I purify my mind. That is one meaning of Indra. Other meaning of Indra also is that uh, Indra is uh, Indriyanam Raja. He is the master of the senses. Who is the master of senses? Mind. Mind coordinates all. So may my mind be auspicious to me. <laughs> Meaning may I have auspicious thoughts. May I have thoughts of sadhana. May I have thoughts which will help me to turn within. Otherwise the mind listens to Upanishad nicely. At some point in time the mind knows what it should do. But it will create opposite thought process. It knows that I should see auspicious, but it will want to explore the inauspicious. It knows that, you know, alcohol is not good, tambaku, gutka, all that is not good. But it will still want to eat and drink and enjoy all that. It is not auspicious, but it will create that. 
may that not happen meaning may my thoughts be in tune in alignment with what i seek not taking me away somewhere else and making me fall so swasti na indra vridha shrava and indra also is a presiding deity for rains may there be rains in the srishti because through that rains lot of things happen if rains are not there how much trouble is there food is not there drought is there water to drink is not there so many challenges so may indra be auspicious means may the presiding deity of our hands be auspicious may our mind have auspicious thoughts may there be enough rain in the world outside all that and may our yeah mind be auspicious indra nam raja so swastina indra vridha shravaha swastina pusha vishvavedaha may the pusha the sun the narishar who is all knowing be auspicious to me vishvaveda means is all knower see how our culture the word for sun is pusha narishar because they knew very well and it is documented evidences are there knowledge is there that how the srishti goes on because of sun in the life on earth is going on because of sun because without that sun no proper evaporation rains also will not happen no you know photosynthesis in the plants no metabolism working properly in the human beings it's all connected to the cycle of the sun the circadian rhythm also is connected to the sun so the nourisher food will not be available without sun so he is the nourisher swastina pusha and he is all knower why because he is always present again we don't think surya only as the sun who is in the world outside as a star surya dev the presiding deity of not only that sun functioning outside but surya chakshusha surya presiding deity of our eyes and uh, surya also symbolic of knowledge so knowledge is that which nourishes us so may we see auspicious so may pusha help me for that may i have the right knowledge right understanding sun is also symbolized connected with our buddhi when we say dhiyo yona prachodayat may that sun illumine our thoughts it means knowledge may right knowledge illumine and that sun also is symbol of consciousness because life as i said on earth is not possible without sun so without consciousness life is not possible so that sun is consciousness that sun is illuminator of my thoughts that sun is the presiding deity of my eyes may i have the grace of that surya and that sun also feeds us through the food <laughs> digest the food metabolic fire etc is because of the sun so that's why we are sun worshipers much before the modern cult has started where they are saying oh i don't believe in any forms because which god what god you have not seen god but sun is visible sun is the source of light sun is the source of energy so i worship the sun there they are still worshiping sun only as a sun ball of fire ball of fire, whatever hydrogen helium and all that we are seeing the sun as much more than that as surya dev because we see consciousness functioning through all our vision is not limited only to what we see through the senses there is so much beyond the senses so swastina pusha vishvavedaha swastina starksha arishta nemeh may the wind the swift blowing wind be auspicious to me so tarksha also means our prana so one is the wind the air outside so the air of course is required for our survival and may that harmony be there in the uh, wind outside there because when it is gentle breeze it is great when if it is swift and when it is very you know the cyclonic breeze and all that um, one can't study properly 
one is disturbed by this natural forces so may that wind be auspicious may vayu devta be auspicious to me also as we said so that symbolizes prana shakti so may our pranas be auspicious because the five physiological functions again going back to tattva bodh prana apana vyana udana samana the five physiological functions what we take in what we leave out the circulation the assimilation the you know ejection out of the body all these are pranas and each of the pranas have upapranas also so there is a prana for winking of the eye blinking of the eye there is a prana for yawning you know there are pranas for many of these they are called upapranas naga kurma krakala like that they are upapranas so five pranas five upapranas may they be harmonious because if prana is harmonious because prana is that which connects body and mind at the time of death that prana connection between body and mind is cut prana nam granthi prana nam granthi rudro ma vishantakah is what we say in the rudram this prana this connecting this body and this mind is the prana shakti how does the jiva connect to this particular body only through prana shakti at the time of death that is cut so the jiva goes and takes up another prana another body and associates with that through the prana shakti so the point is pranas must be harmonious if and prana one aspect is breathing but other four pranas which are there so all the physiological functions may they be harmonious to us may the wind outside be harmonious to us and all of us know that how it is said you know chale vatam chalam chittam nischale nischale nischalo bhavet in this hatha yoga pradipika it comes if the breath is shallow the mind wanders if the breath is deep the mind is quiet so if i if i want to quieten the mind and listen to the knowledge of vedant i should have pranas in my control and engage in some deep breathing quieten the mind helps for listening helps for reflection helps for contemplation helps in general to keep the body fine and you know fit so prana that's why pranayam is important for the student don't think pranayam is only for people who are following the path of yoga do you know tapon ji maharaj such a great vedantic master he used to do pranayam morning his routine will be he gets up early morning and then goes for a walk also one hour proper walk he will do pranayam vedant class all that but he he did so may the prana be auspicious tarksha also means garuda so who is garuda very interesting this is garuda is the vahan of bhagwan vishnu no when garuda comes two things happen one is that bhagwan vishnu comes with the garuda I mean not that wherever garuda comes bhagwan vishnu is there but bhagwan vishnu's vahan is garuda so bhagwan comes on that vahan what brings that vahan i mean what does that signify it signifies that may i have more and more satsang that may i have more and more connection to the divine to the lord through that satsang so may tarksha be auspicious to me meaning may through the garuda we have more and more satsang and second thing which happens when garuda comes is the snakes run so the negativities in us may disappear when satsang comes into our life all this will disappear may we have more and more satsang may our mind develop the ruchi for katha of bhagwan for leelas of bhagwan for remembrance of bhagwan for listening to the truth 
to the nature of Bhagavan. So even if we are listening to Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam is meant to strengthen knowledge and vairagya. It is not some only some stories and the leelas and the birth of Bhagavan and the uh, dance of Bhagavan and the marriage of Bhagavan and all that. That is through that we are connecting to the Lord. Who is that Lord? Satyam Param Dhimahi. Bhagavatam so beautifully says, I meditate on the Supreme Truth. Who is that truth? Sachidananda Rupaya. He is of the nature of pure consciousness. Vishwaspatyadi Hetave. Vishwaspatyadi Hetave. The creator, sustainer and destroyer of the whole world. Tapatraya Vinashaya. Destroyer of the three tapas. Shri Krishna Aya Vayam Numaha. I we prostrate to that Shri Krishna. Not only Shri Krishna, so many forms of Bhagavan which are mentioned in Bhagavatam. All are to make us realize the truth. So don't think that uh, Bhakti Marga, there is an exclusive Bhakti Marga, exclusive Yoga Marga, no doubt. But this instruction is also to harmonize our personality. So senses already should be auspicious. Mind, we say auspicious thoughts. Prana, may it be auspicious. So Yoga Marga, we follow some Pranayam, a seeker can do. And may satsang come, may we connect to Bhagavan more and more. So Bhakti Marg also. So through hands, may I serve everybody. So Karma Yoga also. So that's called integration. Yeah, Vedantic does not mean that I don't follow any other thing. Keep the body fit and fine. Through all this, so many sadhanas are given. So may Tarksha means may Garuda help me to get more and more satsang. May he bring Bhagavan to me as a vehicle of the Lord. And may I realize that Vishnu, who is all pervasive, Vyapakatvat Vishnu, that all pervasive consciousness, may I realize to get even Vedantic satsang is very rare. Not easy to get Vedantic satsang. Swami, so many people are talking on Vedans today. You still see how many are not exposed to Vedant will be much more. Huge number is not exposed to Vedant at all. Not only that, some are exposed to Vedanta, they will not have ruchi for Vedanta. Understandable because each one's temperament is different. So somebody follows in the Advaita Vedanta. I'm talking now of Advaita Vedanta. Advaita Vedanta, very few people are takers of it. A lot of them will go for Advaita Vedanta, Vishita Advaita Vedanta or some other forms of philosophy also, Sankhya, Nyaya, all this. Today we may not know them through Sankhya Nyaya, those words, but those thought processes exist even today. So how many people get this? When we say Vishnu, may Garuda bring Vishnu to us. What does that mean? For a student of Vedanta, it means the knowledge of Advaita Vedanta. The Bhakti Marga, it may be that may Bhagwan and Katha and Leela, may the Nama Smaran be auspicious and all that. May I have Ruchi in listening to Katha, Ruchi in doing Nama Smaran. So that is a different understanding. Here we are talking about Vedan. So, nameless, formless, attributeless, supreme Brahman. May I have the intensity, that understanding of that truth and seeking, intensely seeking that truth. Because all around me is all the names and forms and uh, easy to get uh, entangled in those enjoyments. To withdraw completely from them, realize the truth. May Tarksha be uh, auspicious to us. See, even the simple exercise of Prana Vikshana, just focusing on the breath is powerful to free the mind from the objects, sense objects, pranavikshana. Raman Marshi used to be a big advocate of this pranavikshana. No breathing ratio, just observe the breath. Inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, just observing. That's the homework you can do this week. If you go on my podcast, there will be pranavikshana, guided pranavikshana also is there. One can do that sadhana. Just focus on the breath, incoming breath, outgoing breath, and anytime mind wanders, bring it back to breath. Freed from sense objects. At least that time when one is focusing on the breath, one is not brooding. 
If the mind broods habitually, bring it back. If one does this abhyas, one will get certain vairagya also, one will get certain sense control, the prana also will get in tune, mind will become quiet. So many benefits are there of prana viksan. One is ready to contemplate. So, Swastina Starkshu Arishtane Mehi. Swastino Brihaspati Dadhatu. May Brihaspati, the Lord of uh, the Guru of the Devatas, be auspicious to me. Meaning, may I have the grace of the Guru. The student wants the grace of the Guru. The teacher is also saying, may the grace of Guru be with me. Meaning, one is as a Devata, of course, Brihaspati is the Devatas, uh, is the Guru of all the Devatas. His grace we seek and through him the symbolic meaning is grace of the entire Guru Parampara be with me. And who is the real Guru? Bhagavan himself. Sadashiva Samarambham, Narayana Samarambham or Narayanam Padma Bhuvam Vasishtam Shaktim Chatat Putra Parasharam Chad, the full Parampara of Advaitic uh, Masters. One invokes because only the grace of the Guru will help us to realize this truth intuitively, to know the self. Without Guru, impossible it is to know this truth. Acharyavan Purusho Veda, who has a teacher who is living this truth, that person only will know the truth. And one has to listen to it from the teacher. So may I have the grace of the Guru. May the Guru be auspicious to me. May there not be any misunderstanding between me and the Guru. May I do what the Guru says? Not that I can't question. I can question to learn, to understand. But may I not have a rebellious attitude and a attitude of indifference. May my ego not be more strong that what Guru says, I don't accept, so I will not live it. I may not understand today, but I should put in the efforts to understand, tune up, why did the teacher say this? And try to live. So, the grace of the Guru, may it be there with me. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May there be peace. And when we say Shanti, how Gurudev used to say Shanti? Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Not Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. From the phenomenal forces, nature, cyclone, storm, thunder, rain, drought, all that. May there be peace. May phenomenal forces be harmonious to us. May people and the beings around be harmonious to us. May we be quiet, subjectively to focus. So this is the Shanti Mantra. We have gone through it. Now we will enter into the Upanishad from our next class. This week, if you want, you can do two things. One is memorize the Shanti Mantra. And second is sit quietly for 10 minutes every day. Focus on the breath. And at the end of that 10 minutes, chant the Shanti Mantra once, invoking the bhav. What all attitudes the Shanti Mantra is telling us, now? It will invoke, invoking all that. May I see auspicious. May I be healthy. May the... Grace of the Devatas be with me. May the grace of the Guru be with me. You know, may there be peace in my uh, life. One invokes all these. So that way, one can do certain sadhana. Next week, when we do the Upanishad class, one hour we will do the class and 15 minutes we will start our meditation. So we will also start practicing. So we will internalize what are the attitudes the Shanti Mantra speaks about. We will internalize all that. For today we will stop here. If there are any questions, you can raise your hand. <clears throat> How do I join Vedanta Pandas? I will put the announcement on the group. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate 
ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम